Welcome to Nuremberg, a near from home's cheeky weekend exploring this glorious city. And today, it's going to be all about the food. And considering we are in the cultural capital of Franconia, that can mean only one thing. There's going to be amazing beer and even better sausages. So I hope you are hungry, because there's a lot to eat. Cheers, everybody. And eagle-eyed viewers out there will already know by this highly recognizable background exactly where we are. If you saw my normal Nuremberg video, then you would know we're out here in the Waffenhof, built right into the city walls of Nuremberg itself. It's an incredible place to be. It feels almost like a living history museum, a permanent Renaissance festival right here in the city. It's just so beautiful. However, if you have seen that video, though, of course, you'd also know that considering the Waffenhof is so close to the train station, I usually just walk on by, enjoying the ambiance, but not ready or in the mood to sit down and have a beer and some food. That is, at least, until right now. The beer is also classically absolutely fantastic. It's not the famous Nuremberg Rot beer. We'll be getting that later. However, one thing I do want to call out is Franconian beer logos. They are some of the most beautiful ones. I mean, sorry, Paulana, but this is prettier. Maybe I just like it because it's got a castle ruin on it. <laughs> if you collect beer coasters, this is the place to do it. Now, for food. What could we go for if anything other than a Franconian sausage? And at this place, they offer vegan sausages as well. So we're going to check out both. You're not being left out this time. <laughs> but enough about this. I'm really hungry. We need to see how these taste. Well, they look really good. They do look really good. And if you're familiar with the channel even more so than just our Nuremberg series, you know that I love Franconian food. The food up in Bamberg, kind of Nerdlingen, and of course, Rotenburg. Oh, it's just so delicious. Let's see how this sausage tastes. I mean, was there any doubt? The tanginess you get from the bed of sauerkraut. One of the most interesting things about Franconian sausages, especially Nuremberg sausages as well, is they make them much thinner and smaller than they do, say, in Munich, which is the worst I'm most used to nowadays. And because of that, you get a really beautiful grill flavor in there, a smokiness, an earthiness, which I find in a lot of Franconian food, but especially exhibited in their sausages. Overall, I must admit, I was a little bit curious about this place. With ambiance this good, sometimes people kind of skimp on the food because they know you're gonna come here anyway. But as always with Germany, they just don't play like that. This is top quality. I am really loving it. In my head, I was like, okay, you should grab the camera from Camille and let her eat a sausage. But lo and behold, mm, I just cut off another piece. <laughs> That's how good it is, but anyway. Let's be past the camera. Divorce. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, I must admit, I am really curious how your Wurst is going to be. You get left out on so many of our German food tours. I'm really excited for you to have something to eat. I'm so excited to finally participate. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Is it really good? It's really good. I often buy vegan sausages from the grocery store, but this is obviously a step above. It's just so greasy and juicy, <laughs> and I don't know, there's so much flavor from the grill. It's got that nice like crack when you bite into it. Hmm. Now, yours did come with potatoes, <laughs> mine with sauerkraut. Maybe if you get a bit that my sausage wasn't resting on, I would love for you to try it. Mm, yeah, yeah. I feel like the tanginess of the sauerkraut really added a lot to the richness of the regular Wurst. I'm curious if that will hold true for a vegan Wurst. Let's see. The sauerkraut is really good, but I feel like my sausage would have to be much richer and much fattier for it to mm. really pair well together. Hence why they paired it with potatoes. Honestly, I just eat it on its own though. <laughs> I must admit, in general, I'm really happy with this because I, I was really worried that with a place, like I said, with this much ambiance, you could skimp on the food and you'd still make your money. Probably make more money, mm -hmm. but I'm really liking it. Yeah, it's really good. And I'm glad I got to eat too. Just window shopping here is a delight. The amount of amazing things they have. Let's get inside. Oh, it looks really cool.
Oh. I mean, they do say this is the best Levkuchen, kind of like gingerbread. They say this is the best in the world. <laughs> Come here, look at this. This is incredible. <laughs> they have so many beautiful biscuit tins. Uh, they change them with the season around Christmas time. Of course, you can get Christmas themed ones because this store is actually right on the Christmas market plots that they have. Oh, I kind of want an emperor's biscuit tin. <laughs> Do you want to get it? Yes. Yes. Okay, so this is one of the things we'll get. <laughs> How long do you think a bag like this will last? Last of a day, last of a <laughs> We also have to get these. As I mentioned, we came to Nuremberg with our friends during the Christmas market season. They introduced me to this amazing shop and to Domino's. I'll explain what they are a little bit later, but needless to say, this bag lasted about a day. <laughs> wow, this is a real <laughs> Oh yeah, I do feel like an unboxing channel now, first time ever. And of course, unfortunately, Schmidt doesn't have any seating and I can't wait to eat this. So we just nipped around the corner. We're still at the kind of Marktplatz uh, just to get a cola light, a coffee, and to eat these right away. I think I want to start with the Domino's and we'll end with the Emperor's Lebkuchen. Oh, these are so cool. They're traditional all around Southern Germany and Austria. And essentially what a Domino is, it's dark chocolate. Well, it's a dark chocolate covering over an apricot jelly, some Leberkuchen and marzipan. They're actually related to the British Jaffa cake in that way. It's kind of that chocolate layer with some jelly in it. And I think that's why I love them so much. They remind me of my childhood, just significantly more gourmet than what I'm used to. Ah, oh, I haven't had one of these since Christmas. Mm. They're absolutely incredible. What more do you want? Now, I am a glutton for marzipan, but the apricot jelly, the Lebkuchen, this is fantastic. If you've never had a Domino before, which why wouldn't you, then you need to make sure you get one of these. And I think, honestly, getting them from Schmidt, it's just so much fun. And they have so many varieties. What a place to eat some candy. <laughs> But now what we've been really waiting for, the Emperor's Lebkuchen. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I love it. Oh, I love a good commemorative biscuit tin. But if I may, just for a moment, before we dive in, if I could just be a little bit emotional, a bit vulnerable with you. I think it's at moments like this that I am most happy. It's, you know, it's not the biggest, most bombastic thing we've done this weekend in Nuremberg. It's not gonna be the food I remember the most, not this like crazy old restaurant or anything like that, but that European vibe, right? Of sitting outside at a cafe, the world passing you by, no rush, no push to leave or anything like that, on such a beautiful market square, eating a cookie. I don't think I could be happy enough, I tried. I'm very grateful to get to be here and to make these videos for you guys. But how do they taste? <laughs> Classic transition phrase. <laughs> exactly. Now, for those of you who aren't in the know, what is a Lebkuchen? It's kind of gingerbready, but even then that description really falls short. It's much thicker, it's a lot softer and chewier, and it doesn't really taste that much like ginger. So the closest I can tell you Brits and Americans out there is it's kind of like a gingerbread, but a lot better. A little bit more rustic in a way as well. They're most famous during Christmas time. We've actually eaten Lebkuchen on this channel quite a bit, but I've never tried it from Schmidt. At least, not in front of you guys. Ah, oh. take a look at that. See what I'm saying? It's so much more moist. It's not hard or tacky. Let's go for it. This is probably one of the best Lebkuchen I've ever had. It is so much moister than what I'm used to. I mean, I know I said that it was going to be, but this is even better. But I mean, what else am I supposed to say? These are an amazing treat, not just for Christmas time and getting them all year round at such an amazing shop in such an amazing location. It is such an easy win. <laughs> However, I wanna know your review because you're a little bit better at putting things to words than me. I don't know about that. <laughs> So this is really good. I've been to a lot of German Christmas markets and had these Lebkuchen, and I think this is some of the best. It's just so good. Really, you'd put it up as one of the best as well? Yeah, it's, I don't know, the inside is just so delicious, so moist, so flavorful. <laughs> it's so hard to describe what the flavor is though, right? Like, if you have a good orange, how do you say that? Like, it just tastes like a really good orange. I mean, what, 
How would you describe it? I mean, I think the best comparison would be if you're an American, you've probably had American gingerbread, and this is just the elevated version <laughs> of that. It's better in all ways. What I especially like about this is there are so many nuts inside of it. Tiny little chopped up nuts hmm. all throughout the inside. I've never had one like this, and it's very tasty. Maybe that's what I meant when I was saying it's got like a rustic flavor. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I just meant that it was nutty. But in the end, I think Ben is totally right. You've got to come here and get some. I, I think this is a really great souvenir as well. I'm a big fan of edible souvenirs. <laughs> Especially when they come in such amazing tins. <laughs>
And of course, what food video here in Germany could possibly be complete without café and kuchen? I've got my café. Oh. And then I get my kuchen. <laughs> Nutella chocolate cake, it looks fantastic. So if you watched our Nuremberg video, we actually came here on the street, Weisgerbergasse. I think it's one of the most beautiful streets. We're here right early in the morning for a good bit of breakfast. <laughs> Hearty breakfast indeed. They have a boutique little coffee roastery here. Mm. I mean, the coffee is gorgeous. Everything about this is fantastic. The view, the ambiance, the coffee. But now let's try the cake. Because if we're being honest, this is why I'm here. Saw this in the window, I knew I needed it. <laughs> that is an intensely rich Nutella cake. Oh, I don't think you're gonna like it, <laughs> but I love this. This is a good place to spend your morning, even if there is a little bit of road noise. All right, so now this might be the part of the video I am most excited to film. We are here at the Haus Brauerei Altstadthof to try Nuremberg's famous Rotbier, a very old recipe, and we've got a flight. Which one are we starting with? Oh man, I mean, what a question, right? Usually when we're eating and drinking in Bavaria, you have a helles and you have a dunkles and then you have a radler. And uh, so yeah, I just usually go with the helles. They're all delicious, they're all a bit similar. There's not a lot of variety, but here we actually have five different beers to try. I think I can only make it through three right now. So here's what we have. We have the historic medieval era Rotbier. Next to it, we have the Renaissance era Rote Weisse beer, the red white beer. And lastly, we have the Rote Bock beer, which is more, they don't give a real date to it. It's probably more around the 17, 1800s when Bock became famous. So we have a massive chronology of beer, the most famous being the Rotbier. And honestly, I'm just excited to try something other than a Helles. And you got a cool drink too, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Can you also imagine calling yourself, your brewery, the Haus Brauerei Altstadthof? With a home brew of the city center. That's who we are. Didn't bother with any branding. <laughs> now let's get into the Rotbier. It does date back to the Middle Ages. Some people say that it's kind of, what well, could be confused with the Belgian red ale. To me, they're just very different. So I view them as completely separate things. Let's try it. What I love about this, besides the fact that it's just a bit novel having something other than a Helles, is that it's incredibly malty. They use barley when brewing the beer, and maybe this is just me being stereotypically British, but I love me a bit of malt. This is so much more complex and interesting, yet still crispy and refreshing. It's a great beer. How do people drink beer in such small sizes? Beer needs to be in bigger glasses. Now, the Rote Weiss, this is much more like a traditional wheat beer, top fermented instead of bottom fermented, and it dates to the Renaissance. Oh boy, I never drink wheat beers, so it's gonna be harder for me to review, but it has that thicker, <laughs> fruitier flavor, exactly as you'd expect with a wheat beer, but so much maltier, again, as you'd kind of expect. They are related after all. And lastly, Bock. The only real difference with the Rote Bock at this point is it's just stronger. It's got a higher alcohol percentage. I mean, because of the higher alcohol percentage, it does come off as a bit more bitter on the back notes, kind of the aftertaste, and a little bit hoppier. A little bit more modern. I mean, I guess that makes sense. It's what, a recipe that's 200 years uh, younger. I really like it. I think if you're into IPAs, this would be the beer to get. Obviously, if you like wheat beer, then you're gonna love this. However, for me, I think just the traditional medieval rot beer, absolutely fantastic. I'm so glad we finally got to try this. And what a place to do it too. Castle looming behind us, that tower. I mean, I'm not getting to look at the backdrop. I'm looking at a camera, but I imagine what you guys are getting to look at is pretty cool. And all the tourists in the background. And all the tourists. <laughs> I mean, as am I. On a fun turn though, it's not just beer. They do a very interesting drink. So Camille's not just stuck with a radler this time. You got something cool. Can't wait for you to try it. Here, let's swap over. Let's bring the camera. But let's see how it tastes. They should have this more places. Really? This is really good. Nice. It's a little bizarre though. At the front, it tastes very fruity, like an Aperol Spritz, but then at the back, it tastes very full-bodied, very rich. I guess you can really taste that rot beer. Do you get hints of malt at all, or is it just the full-bodied nature of it? You know, I don't know beer well enough to be able to tell you that. <laughs> Americans not knowing what malt is. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a very unique concoction. Would recommend when you come to Nuremberg. I'm so glad that you finally got to like have a fun drink. Usually you just get Radler, which like, you know, it's nice, but it's just my drink 
watered down. <laughs> I mean, this is not your drink watered down. <laughs> <laughs> At least in like a special way. In a fun way. Prost. Uh, might just be the beer talking but this was pretty fantastic. I would easily recommend that you come here on your trip to Nuremberg. And if you come here hungry, this seems like a great place to eat too. This place is fantastic. Our time here in Nuremberg is over. Unfortunately, our train leaves in just about 45 minutes. I am absolutely stuffed. It has been an amazing weekend, but now it's finally time to go home and go back to my real job. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you sticking around and hanging out with us for this series. And of course, I will see you in the next video, wherever that might be. It's called Vajrad. Oh no. I mean, sorry, Vajrad. Vajrad. Jesus Christ. Okay. <coughs> Ruhezeit. Stop hammering. I know. You're allowed to hammer on Mondays. <laughs> it's at moments like this that I think... <laughs> I have no idea. It's like the third time that's happened this weekend. Just a kid just pops off in the background and screaming like a goat. Jesus Christ. Ruining the ambiance. <laughs>